Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. This weekend, I was engaged in 30 minutes of Meaningful Mornings, one hour of Vedanta and Bhagavata, three hours of a spiritual parenting workshop, and 14 hours of contemplation in our silence retreat. So what is right now? Manye. <laughs> we begin our week by laughing and smiling. Close your eyes and be quiet. Sarve bhavantu sukina. May all be joyous, may all share joy. Prince Arjuna has asked Sri Krishna, Who are you? And there's a subtlety to this question. In a subjective science, we don't ask, who are you? We ask, who am I? Prince Arjuna, his default is still to externalize. As for Sri Krishna, a master teacher, he responds, but he responded already in chapter two. In chapter two, he describes the one who is independently joyous that captivated Prince Arjuna. Now in chapter four, he's sharing, that's who I am. Instead of directly telling his cousin, I am infinite, I am independent joy, he first describes how this could be someone else, but now he's sharing, this is who I am. Master teacher. Sri Krishna's directly telling Prince Arjuna, he is a avatara, avatara, a fine English word for avatara is adapter, adapter. I continue to share with everyone, the more someone loves you, the more you love someone, there will be adaptation then. Sri Krishna is an avatara, he's an adapter. He is like this because he's compassionate towards Prince Arjuna. He's compassionate towards us. He has adapted his life, he's adapted the teachings so that Prince Arjuna can relate to them. If we cannot relate to the life and teachings of anyone, we'll never be moved by them. So in summary, when Sri Krishna is responding to Prince Arjuna saying, who are you? Sri Krishna is sharing, I love you. <laughs> and now he makes sure that this is clear. Verses 7 and 8. Our, our popular verses, their powerful verses. You know them, you've definitely heard them. We'll explore them. 
यदा यदा ही धर्मस्य भवति भारत अभ्युत्थान अधर्म से तदात्मा सृजाम्यहम क्वार्टर बाय क्वार्टर यदा यदा I hope you note that the word yada is used twice. Yada means whenever, and this is used twice because this law of avatara is not a one-time deal. This is continuous, which is why this word is used twice. When what? Dharma. Dharma is affected. And I'll elaborate on that, but let's pause and Think about dharma. The highest definition of dharma is nature. The dharma of the sun, to be hot. The dharma of sugar, to be sweet. The dharma of us, to be happy. This highest definition then expresses as a more relative definition, which is, responsibility. This heat is shared with people. The sweetness is shared with people. This joy is shared with people. So dharma means nature. Dharma means responsibility. If I don't know my nature, how do I find it? Through responsibility. Now, one more perspective on what dharma is. Dharma is a Rhythm, a rhythm, a balance. When everyone knows who they are and they're expressing that, there's a rhythm to life. There's a balance in society. All right? So what has happened to dharma? Bharata, that is Prince Arjuna, bhavati, this is what has happened. Glanihi. There has been a fall in dharma. Glanihi means decline or dismantling. A fall. A fall in dharma. So less balance, less responsibilities, less nature. That's so true. The people generally are less joyous, less cheerful. Why does this happen? This happens when our ideals change. If one's ideal is joy, there will not be a fall in dharma. When one's ideal is not joy, there will obviously be a fall in dharma. If you ask a typical person, why did they go to work? Did they save for joy? A typical student, why do you go to school? Did they respond with for joy? Obviously, there will be a fall then. And specifically, because joy is not an ideal, people sacrifice less and compromise more. Sacrifice means you let go of the lower because you're holding on to the higher. Compromise is you let go of the higher because you're holding on to the lower. I explained this to all of you earlier that satya, I'm sorry, yes, yeah, satya, which is one of the yamas, one of the don'ts, means non-compromising. See how all of that is connected? there is a fall in dharma, then correspondingly, in the third quarter, abhi uttanam. Uttanam means arise, and abhi means in all directions. The point being, this adharma is not just localized to a person or a community. This has now been 
generalized. So a fall in dharma, a rise in adharma. A sign of a dharma presently is distraction. The more distracted one is, really what this shows is a lack of balance. So one will lack being responsible, which means one will lack being joyous. Do you concur? Whereas if someone was practicing satya, this is my ideal, then they're not distracted. They're following their ideal. And this is a reason why overtly, covertly, in a gentle way, in a tough way, I've shared with everyone, invest in being a more vigilant personality. Whatever you need to do, invest in attention, invest in focus. All of this will help you to feel more balance, more responsibility. So a fall in dharma, a rise in adharma. Yada, whenever this happens, tada. Then I respond. I adapt. How? Atmanam srijami aham. Then by my own control, my own choice, I manifest srijami. We all know this intellectually. I'm going to share a few more sentiments about why avatara. Please listen carefully. These thoughts are more causal than gross. Do you remember the three reasons that I've stated thus far about why avatara? From a karma perspective, it is to protect. From a bhakti perspective, it is to play. And from a jnana perspective, presence. See, even using the word to presence doesn't make sense, correct? Presence is a noun. It's not a verb. So magnifying this. In Sanatana Dharma, there are 64 creation theories in the Upanishad. Just in the Upanishad. 64 creation theories. Why so many? Because there's that many levels of maturity of those who are studying the Upanishad through Sanatana Dharma. And what is the highest creation theory? There is no creation. The highest creation theory, there is no creation. Now, this is jarring for all of us, but think. All of you accept that a cause pervades an effect. Do you all accept that? Anything that's made up of wood is going to be flammable. Do you accept that? Wood is the cause. It's flammable. If I shape it into a chair or a desk or drywall, it's going to burn. Now, if I think about this more carefully then, really, is there an effect then? If the cause pervades the effect, isn't there just an effect? Not that I'm wearing gold. But suppose I had earrings on and a necklace and bracelets. And our two-year-old, who doesn't know what an earring is or a necklace or a bracelet, but he knows this shines. He'll say, look, shiny here, shiny here, shiny here, correct? Is there an earring or is there only gold? Okay. Let's look at this in a different perspective. Right now, 
the Pacific Ocean is acting very roughly against the west coast of North America. In the Pacific Ocean, there are countless waves. Agreed? All of those waves are in one ocean. You may not know this, but the Sanskrit word for Pacific Ocean is Shanta Sagara. Pacific comes from pacify. Pacify comes from Shanta. Shanta Sagara. That's like bonus insights that I'm <laughs> sharing with all of you. <laughs> Anyways, those waves are in one ocean. But if we think about this differently, what are those waves fundamentally? Water. What is that ocean fundamentally? Water. So Sri Krishna is the ocean, Prince Arjuna is the wave. But if everyone remembers, all is water. Which is why we have to break this notion of an avatara being born and dying. An avatara simply manifests out of love. Adapting to help us to remember in our 100 Steps to Infinity class, I'd shared a very powerful quote, which is my last thought for all of you to reflect on. This is from a master whose name is Sri Nisargadatta. And he has taught, there is only life. There is no one who lives a life. Vivek thinks this is Vivek, and Tulasi thinks that's Tulasi, and Jagrati thinks that's Jagrati. This is just waves. This is just ornaments. We've forgotten the fundamentals or dharma, which is nature. There are no individuals. There is only infinity. So what should I be doing with my life? I should be living my life so that I feel life, which is reality. I'll review and share more tomorrow. From inspiration to application, your recent application was you visualizing that Meaningful Mornings is a yatra a pilgrimage. When one goes on a yatra or a pilgrimage, they often go with a guide. And what does this guide do? Shows them, shows a tourist or a seeker what they can't see. We often hear the devil is in the details. Conversely, divinity is in the details. You are on a pilgrimage. I am an unpaid guide who's simply encouraging you to see some facets of your journey that you may not be able to see. Because with such clarity, you will become confident. Lack of clarity, lack of confidence. Your application for this morning is, I want you to research what types of avatars are there? What types of avatars are there? There's not just one type. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Be safe, be sound, be serene, be happiness.